Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. You can certainly tell we're in the last few weeks of summer. The mornings are really dewy and it's also starting to get a bit nippy in the mornings and also the evenings. But I'm not too bothered because I do like autumn. It means we can give everywhere a good tidy up and put everything to bed for winter. As for today, we've got a mixture of bits that I want to get on with. So we've got the potato tubs. I'd like to give them a real good clear out today. There's loads of weeds in there and I want to make sure that we've dug up all the potatoes so we don't have them as volunteers next year. And then it's just going to be some odd jobs. I have looked behind the shed and I've put my fork in and it is good enough to dig. So we might just jump into that and start clearing some of those nettles and digging that over. But let's start with the potatoes and see where we get from there. These are my potato pots and I grow my potatoes in these every single year and they're made from recycled damaged water butts and these are just sawn in half and then we just dug them into the ground by about two, three inches. These usually work absolutely great but what I found this year is that I've used far too much bark and leaf mulch and although that held onto the water absolutely fine, it did not hold onto those nutrients I don't think. So I'll be adding lots of bone meal and compost in here and maybe some chicken manure. Because I grow my potatoes in here every year, it's really important that I get any of the potatoes from this year out, no matter how small they are. Those potatoes can attract pests such as the slugs, but also they can harbour some diseases as well. But whether you're growing them in pots or in the ground, you need to be removing as many of those potatoes as possible. If you're growing them in the ground, the last thing you want is for potatoes to be popping up through, say, your onions or your carrots. So let's get in here, give it a real good weed and see how many potatoes we can find. That is a lot better and to be fair that soil might not have been great when I first put those potatoes in but now it is beautifully loamy in there and there's some big fat earthworms as well as the tiny little red composting worms. I think they're probably from the wood chip that was all at the bottom so because all of these do have hollow bottoms all the earthworms can make their way up into the pots. And that's not a bad little harvest. To be fair, apart from the two down at this end, I thought that I'd harvested most of them. But look, we've got all of those potatoes. Most of them are Charlotte, but we've also got some pink fir apple in there and a few Duke of York. And with the really tiny potatoes, don't throw them away or leave them in the soil. Get them out, chop them in half, cover them in a load of olive oil, rosemary thyme and some onion or garlic powder whichever you'd rather and roast them and they're absolutely beautiful they're little crispy nuggets of gorgeousness we've got two more containers to empty so we might as well get those done today as well i'll sort the potatoes out when i get home and just get rid of any green ones because they are poisonous and any that might be a little bit moldy if you have got scab don't worry too much because if you give it a peel it won't affect the actual potato inside let's see what we can find in the other two little pots I haven't got anything in this bed and it could do with a top up of the compost so I'm just going to empty the potatoes in here and any of the compost that falls in here can stay in here. So we've got a red ant's nest in here. This is going to be fun trying to get the potatoes out but we'll give it a go. Um, it's probably too dry in here which is why we've got the ants' nests. But they're gonna have to find a new home, I'm afraid. Given off little 
babies. Look at that little one just to the left. And there's another one just behind it. This is the area around the shed that you keep hearing me harp on about <clears throat> that I'm turning into a nature and seating area. I cut back all the nettles right down to the ground level but as you can see they're already starting to come back so I want to get in here and actually start removing all of the top layer of everything that I chopped down and then start giving it a good dig over. I don't plan on getting this done today but I just wanted to get a start on it and see what we can get done. It's about half twelve let's give it an hour and see what we can what progress we can make So a few years ago, I probably had my allotment for about a year, my shed got burnt down. There were some people that let themselves into the allotment. They burnt my shed, a couple of other people's shed, and then somebody's chickens as well. It was awful. Um, so I've just found the big ash pile and there's all sorts in there from what was in my shed. So I haven't really got anywhere to put it other than behind the shed. So I'm just going to try and dig some of that up and just transfer it over. That's all the charcoal -y bit just moved over into that corner. I have left a good foot between the pile of soil and my shed because I don't want it rotting out the back. Not too bad for an hour's work. I mean, I'm stinging from head to toe, but I never seem to learn my lesson so well you might have noticed that I was collecting the roots from the nettle separately now this is because the roots are perennial so if you add these to the compost there is a chance that they would start growing so we just need to kill them off first to kill them all we're going to do is drown them so add them into a bucket fill the bucket up with water and make sure that they're covered and leave them in for two weeks to a month and then they should have died at this point you can then chuck the roots onto your compost and use the water around the garden as it might have a little bit of nutrients in there from the nettles. So on top of those nettles, I've just popped another bucket in the same size with some bricks in, and that should weigh them down so they're constantly below the water surface. Now because I know that this area is full of plastic from the previous owners, I did have another bucket with me just so that I could separate those. And then it's always worth just keeping a little pile of any sticks or bricks and stones that you come across to add to any nature piles or ponds that you might have. But yeah, really chuffed with how this is looking. I'm going to try and put a whole day towards this tomorrow or Monday. That's the compost heap that we made the other day. So I just need to finish this little area off here and then I've done all around that side. So once I've finished this area off, how I've done that, I'll then start properly digging in and removing all of those roots from the soil. That's probably going to be the next big job. Look at him. He's cute. It looks like it's going to absolutely hammer it down so let's try and show you some of these plants so i might have gone to a nava garden center yesterday afternoon but i found some absolute bargains so in here we have got two beautiful daylilies so i've already got three in one of the big flower beds so i just wanted to buy a couple more just so that we've got the same flower repeating through that flower bed they normally come in fiery colors so your reds your oranges and your yellows so in here we have got red ribs which has got these red tips at the ends of each of the petals, which is quite pretty. And then we've got punch yellow, which is similar, but just with an orangey tinge. 
So these should go really well with sort of the Coreopsis and the other yellow implants that we've got. So I want to now go in with plenty of pinks and bright colours. So that is why we have got the Echinacea at the back as well. The Echinacea, they're called Delicious Candy and they're these bright pink petals around the beautiful cone shape in the middle which sort of starts green and red and then enters this sort of blush pink. I'm hoping that they'll clash quite nicely with the Daylilies and the Coreopsis, which is quite yellow. So the Echinacea, that will come back year on year and there's still plenty of blooms in there. They weren't for sale, they were full price, but I just couldn't walk away without them because they're absolutely stunning. And we've already got some pink Echinacea, so it'll go quite well. At the front here we've got this beautiful ground cover rose again this was 70 percent off now i did think about taking some cuttings but there's so many buds still to open on here and it's a fiery orangey red i'm not too sure where i'm going to put this possibly in the new wild seating area but i just couldn't say no with all of those buds still to come and i think it cost me like two or three pounds so we might plant it up or we might take cuttings from it later in the year, I'm not too sure, but I just want to appreciate all of those beautiful buds first of all. It hasn't got a huge amount of fragrance, but it's the colour that I bought it for. Now you might be wondering why I bought this pot of Achillea, because there's not much going on in there, but literally it is, I think, £1.50, dirt cheap, and you can already see that it's starting to spread throughout the pot, and there's already growth coming through, and a few little buds to come. We'll just repot that in some fresh compost and the root ball, the root system, should start to bulk up over the autumn and the winter period. And then we'll get a fresh flush of those feathery green leaves. And it's a white one, so I don't. most of mine are pink. So I thought this would work quite nicely in the new seating area where I want a lot of white. Then we got a tree and a shrub, I don't know what you class the bamboo as, but we got a black bamboo. Now these are normally quite expensive, it was meant to be £60, but I got it for 13 I just couldn't walk away without it. The plan for this is that I want it to act as a bit of a screen to the new seating area around the corner. I picked the biggest, bulkiest plant and it probably does need splitting, but we don't do that until the springtime as it could kill it off. So I'm going to leave it in the pot as it is until the springtime and then we can think about planting it up in its new home. It isn't too invasive, I believe it is a clump forming variety, but watch out if you are planting bamboo, you might need to either keep it in a pot or you can buy special root barriers which you dig into the ground and it just stops those runners spreading into your garden. So just make sure you do do your research before you buy your bamboo. Then finally, we've got the Corleus Contorta. Now this is known as the corkscrew hazel, and I absolutely love the twisted branches and all the different shapes that it has. Now it grows this purely because of a mutation in its genes. There seems to be loads of new buds on there, and we should get some beautiful greeny yellowy catkins come late winter to early spring. Although it's a tree, it can be kept in a container to keep it quite small, but you don't want to do any pruning on this until the springtime. When you do prune it in the spring, a lot of people use the twisted branches in their floral arrangements. But we'll just pot it up in the meantime until we're ready to put it in its proper home in the seating nature area. Well hey, we've got our first little onion starting to appear. So hopefully it shouldn't be too long before these all start to sprout. These onions won't be ready until next year though. That's all we've got time for today folks, the sky is coming over rather dark so I want to head home before it starts tipping it down but we've managed to get quite a few jobs done today. So the potatoes, that's all sorted, we've dug all of them out and we made that all clearer and tidier and those spring onions seem to be coming on an absolute treat. We managed to make some progress on the new seating nature area around by the shed. Just need to clear the other section off tomorrow and then I can start digging out those nettle roots. And then I've managed to take you through some of the new plants that I've got. So all in all, quite a good day. I'm going to be back down tomorrow. I'm going to try and focus on the new seating area. So it might be a bit of a boring video, but I've also got to harvest some of the tomatoes. So we can see what we get through tomorrow and I'll bring you down for the journey as normal. In the meantime, take care guys and I'll see you all soon. See you later. Bye.